the one thing I really wanted to show everyone, and that is how to create a custom GPT. So on the left hand side in your toolbar, you will see explore GPTs. So when you go ahead and you click on this, this is the screen that will come up. Now I have a team license. So you'll see over here, popular designing schools. That's because these are the GPTs that we use the most in our organization. And so for your company, it would be popular at insert your name. You can also browse through and see lots of different ones that other people have created, but we're going to come up over here and go to create. And I'm going to show you how to create a custom GPT for follow up emails. That is one area where prompting can get really annoying. Now up over here on the left hand side, you have create and configure. Create is where you are going to want to be. This is where we are going to start to put in instructions for how to build our own little digital employee who's going to help us with follow up emails. We'll get to configure a little bit later. And on the right hand side, this is where we can test our AI employee to make sure they're performing the way we want them to. So we're going to come over here and say, I want to make an assistant who can help with follow up emails. And the next two steps after this are always going to be the same. Number one, it's going to ask you to name your tool. And so you can, you know, kind of go back and forth with this if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. And then it's going to create an image for your tool. Now, both of these things can be changed. So honestly, at this point, I kind of just recommend saying yes and yes and getting to the main step, which we are going to get to next. All right. So now that we have these two things done, we actually are going to come over here and say, you are going to help me as a real estate professional manage meeting follow-ups by summarizing transcripts, drafting client emails, and suggesting actionable next steps. Now, this is where for you, it might vary a little bit because based on how you want to customize this, the kinds of things you want in your emails, are you somebody who wants never more than three bullet points? Are you, your tone, your style, all of these different things are going to make a huge difference, but this is the place where you would put in as much information as you want. Think of this as you just hired an assistant to help with email. What are all the things you would tell them? You want to tell your AI tool, in this case, ChatGPT, the exact same things. So I'm going to put a couple of things in here just to give you a little bit of an idea. I'm going to say something like ask clarifying questions if you need, like exactly like I would tell my assistant. What key points should I emphasize? So I'm just giving them examples. Ensure the tone of emails is professional yet friendly. If you're witty or funny or you want to add anything else in there, you can. Use concise, actionable language. Um, and then I'm sharing over here like two types of prompts and things that I might want um, it to do. Now, another really important thing you can do is actually pull out emails that you really like. Like if you have a perfect follow-up email and you're like, this is the template that I share with my assistant, you're gonna have a chance to share that with this tool as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. And every time we put in a new set of instructions, it's just gonna go ahead and update. And then honestly, at this point, it's a matter of just running a quick test and seeing, are you happy with the results and what it is creating for you? Now, before we get to testing it, I just want to bring you over to the configure tab because this is where you would be able to change the name. You can do a description. The description matters more just like internally in your team. So for example, if you had a team license, your assistant or other people on your team could also use the same follow-up type um, template. Um, the instructions are here. These are conversation starters. Again, these are all things that like when you're sharing these become more important. Um, but for right now, you might want to put in the top four things that you ask for. That way, when you open up the GPT, you just have to click the button and it's going to go ahead and do that. So you might do like, here's a meeting transcript, summarize, you know, what I want. Now, remember when I said you can upload in examples, if there are any like PDF files, any types of knowledge sources that you want to include, or you just have emails that you've written that are really, really, really good that you want this tool to kind of create emails in a similar way, this would be the place to do it. Now I have absolutely no idea why code interpreter is always turned off, but we're going to go ahead and you're going to want to make sure that all four of these are turned on. Actions are really fun, but it's a little bit more complicated. It's basically connecting ChatGPT to other platforms like Gmail, Zapier, and all these other different things. There are amazing possibilities. 
I don't know that this is a tool I'd recommend it with. Um, I think I had shared another one with everyone called Chip AI. And if I was going to create sort of like AI agents that, you know, and this is really the same as a custom GPT. So kind of what I just shared with you, you can share in here too. Um, but you'll just see they, it just has a lot more capabilities in terms of being able to take actions and do different kinds of things. But I do think this is a great place to start just to test and see if this is something you want to use in your business. All right. So once you have all these pieces done, you're good to go. So what I'm going to do actually over here is say, here's a meeting transcript, summarize, um, and draft a follow-up email for client name. Now it's going to ask me for the transcript and for the client name. Now in the guide that I shared with you, I did share both Fireflies and the Otter AI. Fireflies is the one that I personally use because I feel like it just has a lot more options embedded within, but this is basically the tool that you are going to use to record any of your meetings, whether you are in person, online, walking around doing a showing, it doesn't matter at all. You probably will use the mobile app more unless you are on a Zoom call. Um, one of the things to know about Fireflies is that in the settings, it will sometimes automatically add itself to your calendar meetings. So you just wanna make sure to turn that setting off until you're fully comfortable with the tool because you might not want it attending every single meeting that you do. Um, what I really love is that you can actually see a lot of sort of stats on your meetings, how many questions were asked, what tasks were there, who spoke the most and things like that. But you can also share this with people as well. Anyways, I'll let you explore this, but I actually have a call that was recorded um, ready for me to use. Um, so you can see in this one, like I talked the most, um, but here, these are all the different questions that somebody asked and it will kind of go through them. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and download the transcript. So we're going to come over here and you can see you can download a transcript, you can download a summary, or you can download the audio. We're going to do a transcript and we're going to do a PDF and download. Now, once I have that transcript downloaded, I'm going to come back in here to ChatGPT and we're just going to go ahead and click on this paperclip icon. We're going to upload. We're going to get our transcript. That is not my transcript. This is my transcript. And we, I'm actually not even going to tell it the client name because I'm kind of curious to see if it can pick it up. And I'm just going to go ahead and send that in. And it's really important to know that you can do all this on mobile. And so you'll see over here, it's pulled out who the, the client is, who everyone is. It's creating a summary, just like I asked it to do. And it's going to create a follow up email for me. Now, again, the really nice thing about this is, like I said, you can do all of this on mobile. You just need to be able to get the transcript and download it down. Now, one of the things you might think at this point is, well, it's kind of annoying for me to download the transcript. I know that thought crosses my mind all the time. And this is where we say this is the beginning of your digital employees. Right now, they're in their early stages, but tomorrow, or with tools like Chip, you can actually even automate this process as well so that this draft shows up directly inside your email. So when we're done, and if this looks good to us, we're amazing. If not, we can come over here and we can say, you know, um, one thing I actually might add is always end every email with the following signature line. Uh, let's say uh, and let's say designing schools. And so now I can come here and as soon as it's done updating, I might say, can you update? Oh, you'll notice it's already going me to do it again. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, we'll do the exact same workflow really quickly one more time. It's gonna say, please provide this. I'm gonna come over here, go ahead, upload. And so you will see it does take just a little bit of time to kind of test, refine, get it to where you want it to be. But once it's there, it does a fantastic job. So it's gonna go ahead and do that. And now let's wait and see, did it follow up on the signature line? There we go. You can also hyperlink websites and do so much more. Over here to create again. And this time we are going to choose who it is we want to share it with. Now it says over here, add people from your workspace because this is a Teams account. But you can see over here with the drop down, I can do invite only, um, which basically means it's mine and nobody else can see it unless I've shared the link. I can share it with anyone inside my company 
or I can share anyone with the link inside or outside my company. Or if I want, I can actually publish this directly to the GPT store. And with that, we can go ahead and press update. And now what's going to happen is when I come to my normal window, and like I said, this would be available for you in desktop and mobile. So it doesn't matter where you're using it. You will see your little meeting um, or any um, GPT you've created directly over here. So anytime you want to use it, let's say you've just opened this up and you're in sort of like the regular conversation, you could just come over here, go to follow up email. Again, click right over here for transcript, upload it in, and you'll be good to go. I hope this was super helpful. I really wanted to show you this during the session. I didn't get a chance to, and so I look forward to seeing how you use it. And if you have any questions, we are here to answer any of them anytime. Thanks so much and have an amazing week.